It is a phenomenon of American life that a Hollywood actor and director has become the fulcrum for a discussion of some of the toughest issues in American society. For instance, do you give the same weight to an anti-Semitic tirade while drunk as anti-Semitism while sober? And since Gibson acknowledged yesterday that even if you are drunk, the words have to come from some place inside you, where? In the past two months, he's been sober in AA meetings five days a week, and he says he's begun a series of conversations, starting with Jewish people closest to him and some community leaders, more to come. He says he genuinely wants to learn why that night he committed what he calls the sin of bigotry. So much. As everyone knows, Mel Gibson is devoutly religious, which is what inspired him to make The Passion of the Christ. His church is a Catholic splinter group called Traditionalist Catholics, who feel the modern Catholic Church has abandoned the real faith. His father, 88-year-old Hutton Gibson, is well known for his writings attacking the Vatican. The Traditionalist Church believes in the Latin Mass and literal reading of the Bible. And Gibson has talked about a war of biblical proportion, though he says no one can say when it will happen or where. Which brings us back to the night of July 28th, and what he says may have been in his mind as he drunkenly said Jews are responsible for all the wars in the world. Now maybe it was just that very day that Lebanon and Israel were at it. Now... It was the 17th day of the raging war in Lebanon, and there were a lot of people worrying that the crisis was escalating out of control. Now, since I was a kid in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, now in the new millennium, you can read of an ever-escalating kind of conflagration over there in the Middle East. I remember thinking when I was 20, man, that place is going to drag us all into the black hole, you know? Just the, the, the difficulty over there. And you start thinking, well, I ever see my grandchildren grow up, you know? What's going to become of the world? Who's going to press the button? And that's fear-related, okay? So, you know, you have your own fears about these things. But there's a difference between saying that place is a tinderbox. Mm -hmm. And the constellation of things happening there could take us all down and yeah. saying the Jews are responsible for all the wars. Well, I the did Jews say that. are responsible. Well, strictly speaking, that's, that's not true because it takes two to tango. What are the Jews responsible for? What are they responsible for? I think that they're not blameless in that conflict. There's been aggression and retaliation and aggression. It's just part of being in conflict and being at war. So they're not blameless. Of course they're not. Okay, now when you're loaded, you know, the balance of how you see things, it comes out the wrong way. I know that it's not as black and white as that. I know that you just can't, you know, roar about things like that, um, that it's wrong. A lot of people are going to say, wait a minute, he's still blaming the Jews. No, but I didn't he's say that. He's still blaming Israel. No, no, but did, did I say that? After several rounds on the Middle East, he said this is his statement of his true feelings. I, let me be real clear here, in sobriety, sitting here in front of you, national television, that I don't believe that Jews are responsible for all the wars in the world. I mean, that's an outrageous, drunken statement. So, was something else eating at him that night? He says he has also realized he had been harboring an old resentment. And the other thing, the other place it may have come from is, you know, as you know, a couple of years ago I released the film The Passion. Now, um, even before anyone saw a frame of film, for an entire year, I was subjected to a pretty brutal sort of public beating. And uh, uh, during the course of that, I think I probably had my rights violated in many different ways as an American, you know, as an artist, as a Christian, as just as a human being, you know. It was the movie that became a kind of Rorschach test. Gibson and tens of millions of Christians who saw the film say it was simply evoking the New Testament version of Jews, Romans, and the brutal crucifixion of Jesus. But the leaders of several Jewish organizations launched a campaign arguing that Gibson had seeded the film with deliberately anti-Semitic images. And they warned that Gibson might be inciting a new wave of hatred, even violence, against Jews. He says that never happened. The film came out, it was released, and you could have heard a pin drop, you know. Uh, even the crickets weren't chirping.
But uh, the other thing I never heard was one single word of apology. I thought I dealt with that stuff. All forgiveness. But uh, the human heart's a funny thing. Sometimes you can bear the scars of resentment. And um, it'll come out, you know, when you're overwrought and you take a few drinks. So, Is there hate in your heart? Is there anger in your heart? There was anger for, from that, I think, because I felt that I was unjustly treated. My resentment stemmed from certain individuals treating me in a certain way. But we ask about those people he thought should apologize to him. Can they now argue they were right about what he is inside? Can you say anti-Semitic things and not be anti-Semitic? Can you say intolerant things and not be an intolerant person? Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Because one changes from day to day. And there are different forces exercised on you that may or may not. And people every day say things they don't mean and things they don't feel. They may feel them temporarily. I mean, we're... We're, we're all broken. And he says he is now learning more about those who were hearing his words. In an earlier apology, he had asked the Jewish community for dialogue and help. But I heard back that a woman who had read the apology actually wept with relief. Now, that sort of hit me. I was like, relief? Oh, my God, she was afraid. She was terrified. And, wow, you know, I, I, I don't think I <clears throat> realized until like a couple of four days later five days later that what i did was press a big fear button you didn't realize that i didn't realize the level of fear that that was there what did you think it was me it was just the stupid ramblings of a drunkard you know and and i guess i had to sort of think well hang on it's conceivable that they think i could be the next uh goose stepping maniac to come into their neighborhood you know